source they hearing due to a SNAP denial or food assistance denial? Yeah. Okay. So, um, you were unable to complete your interview, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So, I, I was going to do the interview with you to see if you're eligible for SNAP benefits, okay? Uh-huh. Okay. So... What is your address, please? I use the address 2221. Uh, okay. So that's your mailing address? Yeah. Now, what's your home address? Them the same two addresses I use. Oh, okay. So, so, so your, your, um, the 2221. 81st Street, Cleveland, Ohio, 44103, is both your residence and your home and your mailing address? Yeah. Okay, and so what's this 8111 Quincy Avenue address here for? Mm-hmm. You don't know what that is? Okay. So I'll remove that. How old are you? 41. 41? Okay. Are you employed at all? No. shelter cost? No. Nope. Okay. So do you live independently or do you live with someone? I'm homeless. You're homeless? Mm Mm-hmm. Is this 221 East 81st Street? Uh, my family address. That's your family's address? Mm-hmm. Do you receive Social Security or Workman's Comp or anything like that? Mm-mm. Nope. Okay. So, you... You are what we call an ABOD, an able-bodied adult without dependents. Are you able-bodied? What does that mean? That means are you physically fit for work? Uh, no. So you're not physically fit for work? Mm Mm-mm. So what is your exemption? What job? What? Um, I can't walk. You can't walk? Nope. So do you, do you get, I mean, how do you live on the streets without being able to walk? You said I, I need medical attention. I said I need uh, surgery. I was stabbed in my legs and ankles. So have you had, I mean, have you had a doctor tell you that you need this surgery? Uh, yeah. Okay, so have you made application for Social Security? Or uh, you got Medicaid? Uh, yeah, I made application. And is it pending or was it denied? Yeah, What's the outcome? It's pending. It's pending? So can you provide us verification that it's pending? Well, I can't provide y'all with the application. I don't know how to provide y'all with nothing. I'm not good with transferring information around the facts and emails and nothing on uh, documents. Then, like that. Um, then who made the application on your behalf? Did somebody make the application on your behalf? No, I didn't. Okay, so you made the application, and they mailed, the Social Security mailed out to you their outcome, or telling you it's pending. Mm -hmm. 
because somebody told you or you read that yeah. the application was pending. Yeah. So why can't you allow the agency to 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 get a copy of that well, so that you can get food assistance? Go ahead. I, I don't know how to send it to y'all. I don't know how. If I sent you a, a prepaid envelope, you couldn't fold. I don't have access to my mail, so no, I'm not going to be able to get it. I ain't been dealing with a mail in So if we were to approve your benefit and send it, you wouldn't have access to the EBT card. Probably not. So then do you want to withdraw your hearing? No. Then how are we gonna how are we gonna send you anything? Well, send it. And how are you gonna send, send the information? And how are you send it. Let me worry about all that. Well you just told me that you can't provide well, you can't send it. send it. Just send it anyway. Let me worry about how I'm gonna get it. I don't wanna be talking okay. with you about my my benefits and, and things that I need in life. Quit asking me stupid questions. That's a stupid question. Of course. Why would I want to throw away my, my application for food stamps because you asked me about my mail? Don't, have, don't be questioning me about my mail. I told you I can't do it. Having problems with my mail right now. Send me my, my EBT card and let me worry about it. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. What I need from you is something from Social Security saying that your application is pending. You told me that you could not, you told me that you couldn't send it back to me. No, you have to do that. You have to do that. I'm not going to be worried about that. I'm not going to be arguing with you about that. I told you what my problem, my situation is. Okay, so then we'll we'll send it out. You are what we call an ABOD, an able-bodied adult, until you can prove different and you can only get benefits for three months. Okay? All right, whatever. So, your benefit is going to be $281 a month. And once you get the card, you can... You can activate the card and, and access your benefit. But if you cannot provide us... I'll go for that, bitch. Department to the Milton with Job and Family Services State Hearings Unit. You um, may request for a state hearing due to a SNAP denial or food assistance denial. Yeah. Okay, so um, you were unable to complete your interview, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so I, I was going to do the interview with you to see if you're eligible for SNAP benefits, okay? Okay, so what is your address, please? I use the address... 2221. Uh, okay. So that's your mail lead address? Now, what's your home address? Them the same two addresses I use. Oh, okay. So, so, so your, your, um, the 2221 East 81st Street, Cleveland, Ohio, 44103 is both your residence and your home and your mailing address. Okay, and so what's this 8111 Quincy Avenue address here for? You don't know what that is? Okay. So I'll remove that. Okay. And how old are you? 41. 41? Okay. me some vegan with my grilled sandwiches, butter on the, on the stove. Are you employed at all? Some, no. some TLC grenades. Total light changes today for my, for my freaks and my And um, do you pay any shelter?
shelter costs? You know all these places. Nope. Okay. Is, I'm not in the shelter if I'm in the world at home. Do I pay any shelter costs? So do you live independently or do you live with someone? Wouldn't all the questions be asked? You're homeless? On that question. Okay. Now, I talked to her department a couple of weeks ago and told them these same answers. So, who, whose address is this 221 East 81st Street? Damn. Where am I from? What difference do it make? Is he a, is That's he your family's address? Or is he taking my goddamn application? The words say home. Do you receive Social Security or Workman's Comp or anything like that? Uh -uh. No. Okay, so you, you, know the US you are what we call an ABOD, an able-bodied adult without dependents. Are you able-bodied? That means are you physically fit for work? For a year long, or a year calculated, maybe so you're not physically years. fit for work? What's the time I'm just in so, like what is your exemption? But I ain't no problem. In their society, I'm a bum. They haven't allowed me to do any work. You can't them. walk? They so do, like you, I'm black do you get... That I'm a, I mean, a how do you live on the streets without being able Life to walk? Life is hard coming from me. I mean, I mean, the world always shows me how to live. It's like never ending. I wouldn't even be here if I ain't had a Lord giving me so much gain for these lands. So have you had, I mean, have I'll you had a doctor like tell you that you need this surgery? This EBT uh, yeah. application is to show you how much okay. hatred. So that our own have black you made application for, for Social Security? Because uh, you got Medicaid. She don't want me to have EBT. They say they only want to give it to me for 90 days. And is it pending or was it denied? $40 billion. What's the outcome? It's, it's pending. So they can you provide us verification that it's pending? EBT. That's how this well, system works. It's broke. Why would a nigga be happy to follow this I'm system if it's broke? You can't explain to niggas why they shouldn't got them protests and give up on the government. After they just watched you on the news get some real pins in a then European country. Then who made the application on your behalf? Did somebody make the application on your behalf? No, I did. So much ammunition and pimp Okay, so you made the application and they mailed, the Social Security mailed out to you their outcome or telling you it's pending. Because somebody so told you, you or you read that the application was pending. Signs, yeah. So... Why can't you allow the agency to, 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 to get a copy of that so that you can get food assistance? If I sent you a, a prepaid envelope, you couldn't fold it. Put my mail, so no, I'm not going to be on my left leg. So if we were to approve your benefit and send it, you wouldn't have access to the EBT card. I don't see you working now. If I am, I'm appreciating pain. So then do you want to withdraw your hearing? No. Not being able to how are we going to send you anything? How are you going to send the information? Send the information? How are you? That's why my body deteriorated. Then, then the well, you just told me that you can't provide, you can't send it. Level. So all this, all this, I'm just, uh, just coming at me like a cop. Okay. Rushing. I get these food snaps. I can start to eat the proper nutrients and ingredients my body needs to get healthy. That's a stupid question. Of course, why would I want to throw away my, my application for food stamps because you asked me about my mail? Don't have, don't be Look how dumb this question is. No. Okay. Why would I want to throw away my application for food stamps because you asked me about my mail? Look, she's trying to attack my application telling me to cut off my application, bro. 
if I sent you a, a prepaid envelope, you couldn't fold. I don't have access to my mail, so no, I'm not going to be able She's to. She's begging me anything. about mail, but mail. So internet. if we were to approve your benefit and send it, you wouldn't have access to the EBT card. Look at her doing mystery work now instead of trying to help the So then do you want to withdraw dreams. your hearing? No. Look at that question, y'all. Look at that question, y'all. Who y'all know who applied for EBT SNAP just want to get on the phone with this lady and then turn around and get her to agree to you to terminate your hearing for your money. Who is these people? Who is these people? Listen to the sickness in this woman's in this woman's conversation. This is an alien, a terminator sent there to attack me. This ain't just no regular phone call. This is her showing my team that she's a hater and that she hate me so much she had helped them kill me, cover up the murder. This is her attempt at her job. She can only do so much right now on this phone. Her team had already denied me food stamps. That was an earlier call a couple weeks ago. And then they teasing me as why they denied me. They sent me a letter in the mail giving me the time and date. And then they sent me a letter at the day of the hearing telling me the decision that was made. And I was denied because I wasn't at the meeting. Then they called me and told me about the letter that they sent me denying it. And I said, well, why the fuck y'all ain't call me and tell me about the meeting? They smirking and they scissoring and you know how snakes laugh. They, that little grinning kind of snake laugh. So anyways, you know, they sent me this mail because they know they got armed security at the front doors of every mailbox that I use to keep me from getting the mail. I mean, it's a history of that shit. The Camilla's house. That was back in 2015, 16, before stimulus checks came out. When I was getting legal mail sent there, they was giving me trespassing orders from Camilla's homeless shelter. And I just only go up there, pick up some mail, and eat some breakfast. Then they started pissing and putting shit in the breakfast and shit. So I can't eat there. Then they had a little shower program. You could take a shower there. So if you just, summertime is hot, whatever, you, you saving your money up. You ain't got your apartment, your hotel room right now. You go in there, take a quick shower. They sent a couple niggas in there one day to fight me. Well, if I was like 6'9 uh, Takashi, it would have got off on me like 6'9 if I was his size. But I was my size. So they didn't get off on me. But the same hit, the same cops that sent the guys in, in Camilla's homeless shelter in Miami, Florida, downtown, or 7th Avenue, the same hit happened to me right before it happened to Takashi. So that's why that's my little nigga, that's my rider. We connected by the hip when it comes to going against the Illuminati. That's my teammate. So of course they're going to want you to hate that nigga. Of course they're going to want you to want to attack him, break him or break him down. Because he's a partition of me. R. Kelly, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jackson, Prince, Cheryl LeVert. I mean, and let's go on. C murder, BG, all these extenuations of who you see. I'm ODB. Even the artists is now you listen to one of these. Now, 6ix9ine Takashi need to do follow up, how follow up.
take them to civil court, expose their whole operation, attach them niggas to the police department that they work for, find the witnesses there that's related to or friends with police officers, find the immediate closest police that in that area, gym memberships there, Whatever department, and then if you don't find police, look for look for fire department or anybody who work in the with the jails, like correctional officers, probation officers, any of the people, nurses that work in the jail, all of them could be suspect to help someone what cops help set you up in there. It's gonna be the ones who is closest there. I'm at Camilla's house. The cops set these employees up to come and attack me while in Camilla's home and shit. I made two separate police reports. This was in August of 2022. Made two separate police reports about it because this ain't this ain't this ain't a game with money involved. And the victory towards your your king is involved. So you think you saying you saying two little pies, you saying two little pies to protect the king, which is who, which is who I'm at war with, the king. So we saying some little pies to come attack me in Camilla's shower where AKA 69 Takashi was in the shower at the gym. Same environment, same situations. Now, how these punks got the overactions on Takashi is because of a joke that I made in regards to another fight that happened with me and some chunks like that in Metro West this last time I was in there. I overreacted on a joke. They didn't do all that shit. It was, a, it was a, just a hyphenate the funny. I whooped their ass. And I ain't whooped their ass good enough because there was a lot of them. And I went to the emergency or the hospital because you go there when you get into a fight anyways. I got escorted out by Remy Ma. So that's how big my fight was. That's how bad these niggas was on me. A female guard took me out to fight by herself. So that means they ain't try her to get to me. You know, I'm fighting like six, seven of them niggas. And uh, the other little black dude from Chicago. Shit, it's his fight. I'm just, I'm just fighting them because it, it was it was one on one. Your mouth, that's how the fight started, the Chicago nigga mouth, that's pretty much what it looked like, his mouth was in the fight, and the Spanish nigga fish was in the fight, So, in that, but the black nigga mouth started it, I guess he had pent up animosity, and he was doing little shit that I couldn't recognize, the Chicago nigga, he said, like, you don't understand what they trying to do, I, I understand that shit. But your mouth went on from zero to 60 like you was rolling with me. And that Chico jumped up like what? The Black King jumped up. Bam! I think the black guy had a good like maybe eight looking seconds into the beginning of the fight. If that long, I don't know. But somehow this Spanish nigga get to beat this nigga ass. I'm like, damn, I can't get in that. That's two niggas, I, and then shit, there's so many goddamn security in this motherfucker, and then another Hispanic Latin King that was a trustee that worked for the police cleaning up and serving trades, run from the police desk where he talking to him back, all the way to the other end of this little 30 feet, 40 foot cell dorm room. And when he run, he run, he comes and push past and pump off my bump, which is about four months away from the fight. 
cut down my aisle, bump into me, kind of like look at me and shit, size me up. I'm oh, shit, I'm on the top bunk with them. I have nothing to do with this and nobody else do either. No, like nobody got nothing to do with this shit. Fat ass Hercules ass nigga go help Hercules who punched uh, motor mouth in the mouth. And, and this fat ass bubble butt motherfucker jump on the nigga and start beating the black nigga up too. So you got two Chicos beating the fuck out the black nigga. Then I think they start calling them niggas while they beat up. Fuck ass bitch ass nigga. Somehow I got in that shit after that. I'm punching these niggas out, man. And, um, some other little size Spanish niggas run in, about four of them. And, uh, shit, it was on two niggas. One nigga on the floor, getting up off the floor. I don't really much know what that nigga was doing. I know I'm swinging, boy. I'm swinging like I'm in the motherfucking bottom of the night, nigga. I'm clocking their asses. Shit. Like lady came, pulled me out of there. Made me sit down somewhere in the hall or some shit. Took me to the clinic. Once we get to the clinic, the Spanish cops, not Spanish cops, the Haitian, Jamaican, whatever the fuck kind of cops they would have been, the cops. Get one of the main guys that was in the fight and take him to the clinic holding cell where I'm uh, a couple feet away talking to the nurses. And give him a knife. And let me come back and then push me back in that first floor holding cell. And when they open the door, you got the big fat Chico, the nigga who jumped in the fight to help his Hercules homeboy beat up a nigga the size of Steve Urkel. Now this nigga, this Spanish guy in the room with about five or six black niggas who getting moved from different cells. These niggas say they in the bloods. I think they're from Miami. So they two things in one state. And what that mean in Miami is just no outright lie. You wanna be a nigga in the bloods. So you claim what you want to be. You all wanna be first. So all these wanna be niggas in here claiming this game they wanna be in. And they doing and they doing their signs and shit. Now as long as I've been coming in these cells, even if I fought the other now, I never see a gang of niggas lined up at the door ready to fight a nigga for walking in the door. And you don't even know the nigga you wanna fight or the fucking nigga that you fight on behalf, you don't even know this Spanish nigga. That says one thing. Correctional officers set these bombs in here. Put these group of niggas in here together. Gave the Spanish guy the thumbs up with the weapons. Told the niggas, help the Spanish guy. Probably said whatever little concoction about me that can get they hate because they don't know me at the moment. But I see some of the guys saying, hey, he got a knife. Don't come in here. Don't come in here, man. He got a knife. The black officer won't bring me from the nurses room. They say, he got a knife. He's standing in the doorway. Big 300, maybe 400 pound ass pig. I mean, Right in the doorway. Then he moved, come out the doorway, go. I guess he got one of the knives from the black dudes who getting transferred and come back with the blade they got it. So how did the Spanish guy I'm in the cell fighting with get searched for a fight? Didn't have a weapon because he would have used it in the fight. Get downstairs to the nurse's clinic where I'm in the next nurse's room office talking to him. Leave out the nurse's office to go in the holding cell with the guys who going to see the nurse coming from the nurse or getting transferred in and out. The guy I'm fighting, he's in the front of the door and grabs a knife. 
that mean the police put a particular inmate, one of they niggas, down there at that time with a knife and told him to hand it off to the fat Chico. The Chico told the niggas something that made them side with a Chico over a nigga they don't even know. So that must have was another hit order from the police saying, hey, we'll break y'all niggas off this if y'all help me do this. So they trying to scare me from coming in this room because it's all of them, it's just me. So officer opened the door and as he opened it slow, they ain't rushing the crowd now. And he looking at me, shit, it look like I'm just ready to probably just go in there and play some cards or something. Just I'm, I'm out in space. I'm like, say, all right. He moved the door open. He kicked the door open some more. He kind of trying to see the little fat little Chico motherfucker trying to flex. Niggas, they think they get ready. All right. Open the door. And I go to walk in that motherfucker. Now, I walks in. I'm in the door, peacefully. Police closing the door behind me. Cause he's just opening it up to let me in and closing it. Like behind my last foot, it's gonna be closed. The Chico nigga get scared and rush me before the police close the door. Cause while trying to keep me from coming in. So he trying not to let me come in, and he trying not to let the police leave. You got four, five, whatever many little skinny ass, little ass niggas, and you the only nigga about four something hundred pounds, and you see what I did to you upstairs. So shit, nigga, I'm gonna use your ass and keep your ass in their way while I'm beating your ass. They little skinny ass is gonna be trying to run around getting some punches. They ain't gonna get that many. They gonna have to get in line, get up close to get hit, hit me. And I'm gonna be keep lining your ass up like you a punching bag and they the little, little hands moving around. But whatever them niggas was to do to him, that fat motherfucker wasn't gonna you notice know, he wasn't gonna feel it. I'm just gonna go ahead and super take your ass on out of there so you don't got too much strength to help. I ain't about to let no fat nigga just have all this energy. Hell no, nah, I'm going to beat your head in. I'm going to have your ass so tired you ain't going to be able to help them niggas. Then, when I get done with this nigga, weaken his ass up, I'm going to chase them little ass niggas around and start beating their ass too. They don't still be throwing their punches. <laughs> I'm going to be moving out the way, beating their asses too, beating your hell fast. Then, Police want to come back in there five, ten minutes later after they sit here all the boop, 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 They'll be coming in there to say, they ass, not mine. Then you got a knife too? I'm going to take that motherfucker from you. Nigga come like this. Man, I blocked that shit when he came down and stabbed me. I didn't jump back. I walked in, kept walking, he tried to attack me to keep me from coming in. I pushed him back again. Then he came back again and stabbed the cop. So he just rushing in. And I push him back. Push him back again. Block his shit in the air. And the cop jumped in the way and he stabbed the cop. Stabbed the correctional officer. The correctional officer locked the door on them, pulled me out. Like Lot was and did uh, like they did a lot with them angels on the in the in the Bible. Also smashed me back. Locked them in. Now they out the window. Now they in the, they more rougher and tougher now that the door closed. Motherfucker, yeah, let me in. Nigga, we just gonna the blue. Nigga, y'all should have let me come in this motherfucker. Why you jump at the door? Shit. I'm on the nigga ass. I'ma let his ass come in there. Close that door. Police gone, because I'm measuring out how much time I can get with your ass. So, 
that was a fight that I had with the, some guys to set, that was set up by the police to attack me. And that's how they was able to get um, 6 9 Takashi. But my fight, it seemed like I was man for man with him, even though I wasn't. I just knew how to move around and punch back. Then, um, when you go to Camilla's homeless shelter, they sent the two little black guys that, um, they're highly homeless guys. They've been there a long time, and there's real pets. They let them help out with shower and lunch. So one of them niggas helping out with the shower. Him and the police sent an attack to attack me while I was in the shower. Just say something adgy, madgy, try to punk bitch you out or something, something quick. I'll get more into the details of that later, but it didn't work for me. The police need him to score a point of disrespect. If they can get some disrespect off, they can use that in the political field to do something major against maybe uh, another artist, celebrity, or another political opponent in the bigger in the bigger field. So they want to disrespect me and punk me out, and that's what they tried to do. And um. Uh, I called the police on their ass. Said, hey, officer, you work here? Yep, oh, I want to make a police report. About what? For what? Fuck. I want to make a police report about an hour ago when I took a shower before I went to my uh, class. I was attacked in the shower. And, uh, guys beat me up and put their hands on me, hit me, whatever I want to report as. That cop was mad as fuck because I checkmated him. I'm showing a history of a retaliation, a history, man, that everywhere I go, I'm involved in an altercation with somebody or with some punk shit, starting with me. So I got to make sure my report to the judge is read that way and not read the way that the state and the police want it to be read because it's going to court. Can't say a nigga a snitch if I'm only going to court for bitch niggas like this. I might as well win. Then I'm in there. What the fuck I'm going to do? Lose? I'm in court. At that time, I was probably out on bond with Thunderbird Lee. Or maybe just getting out of, off of that case. The Thunderbird Lee Zane Jones case. Miami Dade police had me fighting this case three and a half years. And the white cop is the one who actually committed a hate crime and battery and attempted murder by strangling me, calling me a nigga, and it's caught on their camera. And now they talking about uh, they want me to go to court for battery on him. All right, come on. Now show that body camera. You're going to see a white cop strangling me. That's it. That's the whole crime. They said, nigga, I'm going to kill you, you fucking nigger. Die, you black bitch. I hate you, you nigger. In a stop. It's for a guy refused to leave out of McDonald's a block away. By the time he get there, an hour later, he encountered me walking through the parking lot outside, matching the description of the caller, complaint inside. You, come here, is what he write in his report. Black man keeps walking, get to the corner, and runs across the street. White cop calls for backup. They stops him across the street and around the corner to arrest him for or, or they don't say the crime they say they stop him up the street and, and tell him to lay down flat while they find a cage to put him in for transport. The defendant gets up off the ground and spits at the officer at the officer's putting him in the backseat of the car causing the officer to reshift him and direct him down. And after that, no further incident, he was transported, put in the car, took him to jail, and charged with resisting arrest without violence and battery on the rest of the officer. Body cam footage show I didn't spit it. Nigga on the nigga, nowhere around, nowhere. But it do show these white cops saying, I'ma kill you nigga. Die, you black bitch. Now, I'm going to court to beat these charges, which is easiest for me to do. But at the same time, 
I said, I'm going to make this police officer go to jail for his crime against me. Fuck, he did the, he broke the law. I was able to walk away by law. I beat the case. So I was able to walk away like I did do. Because you don't have to stay in a facility because the management called the police on you. You can leave. You don't have to talk to the police. So the management calls the police allegedly on me. Police feel they can get there and now hold you in custody and detain you like you're like you a war criminal. Nah, bro. Management called y'all. They don't want me on the property allegedly. I'm leaving anyways. Stop giving name ID. Suck it. Suck it. Suck it. You can't get shit. Now, that happened January 14, 2019. That's why they were so determined to arrest me on that day, because shortly after that, they arrested Robert Sylvester Kelly, because they now was able to make the multiple effect. You get one, you can now do it to the other. On the day I was arrested, January 14, 2019, it'll show you that that was a very important day in the Robert Kelly's trial and persecution connecting me to him because that's the day that the, the head prosecutor, Gloria Red Hook or Red Horn or whatever the hell her name is, that devil had a, a national hearing in New York, a national lawyer. Uh, interview with her, I believe, with another chick named Faith Rogers or Faith Hill or whatever this little skeezer name was. She got this one. Actually, Faith, not just to call her a skeezer because we like skeezers. We treat them good and nice. She should have been a skeezer and she would have had it better in life. But she was an Asian, a mother of cancer to the black community, a disgrace to black women. That's what y'all call it. The black women will call her a disgrace. What kind of woman do you look up to and say that's your friend knowing that she uh, she was with this nigga who had enough money to make sure their grandkids were set for life? First of all, black women not going to fuck up a relationship with a guy like R. Kelly. Unless she's a dumb bitch too. A nigga got good dick. I'm not saying R. Kelly got good dick, but I know I do. Then he got millions. Bitch, once the nigga have one million, it sound like he got millions to a black woman in the community. He got millions? A million. That's a lot of millions. Now you gonna let the now you gonna let your homegirl fuck your relationship up with him? Cause he wanna go fuck some other hoes for 15, 20 minutes or something outside. You gonna pack that nigga a sandwich in the condo. Start being a telemarketer on these hoes, checking these hoes out, sending them clean bitches. Babe, let me handle this. You picking some foul bitches. You ain't gonna let no million dollar nigga go away, Faith Rogers. And you didn't, cause your million dollar nigga was always a multi-billion dollar dragon, a beast. And that beast sent you at me and R. Kelly. Sent people at me, sent people at R. Kelly, sent you at both. And that's why on January 14th, when I was attacked by a white cop in plain clothes in an unmarked vehicle, a detective, head detective, January 14th, 2019, you and your attorney was getting ready for, for a major, major press announcement. Major press announcement. On the same day that I'm being arrested in another state on a false bogus charge. So that means the police set this up. They actually did set it up. I showed y'all the video. Shit. This is the McDonald's video. The same day I'm getting arrested at McDonald's. It's the same day that Faith Rogers and, and Gloria, Gloria Red Redhead is having a press conference. One of the biggest ones in the entire, all the press announcements put together. This is the biggest one. And then after this date, 
now they was able to manipulate a signature and an agreement with me, which allows them to now go in and turn it around and put it against R. Kelly. And that's how he was then arrested after I was arrested. They had to work on me to get him. So his allegations and charges all come from me and my battle first. That's why when I play this Supreme Court house, when I play the video, you see how angry these people is from not wanting me to even get the pill records. Because they that dirty, nasty, and crooked on my case. You see, I plot for food stamps. The woman tried to tell me to withdraw my application and trying to kind of make me do it. If you apply for food stamps, and you polling black in the community and your and your address is homeless and your work files is nine and ten years and you have zero income in ten years and you can't even fax and type shit. Why would you why would a government agent think it was uh in your best idea to to deny to you deny yourself food stamps? She wanted me to choose that answer. You got to be one of the dumb. Ain't no kid can ever be that dumb. He ain't gonna deny his own mama food stamps. I don't care. <laughs> you got to, you got a child out this world. She would a, a kid know a better answer, but that's just how trifling these androids are. And they being, uh, and they being. Uh, in the flesh of beautiful black queens and princesses. And them queens become sirens and seductresses with their mouth to explain away why they did something foul to you but still make it seem like they did it out of grace and that they was beautiful and you was the bad one. Now, in order to make that part come true, they have to now make me look like I'm the bad one. By putting bad situations in my presence and around me. Make you fail the test. You don't fail God's test and you ain't in jail because you fail God's test. These people was out putting moles and witches and destructive devices to capture you and enslave you. Just like they was doing black men 400 years ago, they doing it now. Black people can't say that ain't how they used to convince the black kings to sell you off on a ship by bringing false allegations against you to that king and that tribal leader. Bearing false testimony against you. Planting fake evidence. So, same thing that the police and the judicial system do now to us in the black community is what they did 400 years ago to get us on the slave ships. That's why the police, the pole that you tied to and the leash that's tying you to the pole is dragging your ass to the slave boat. It's what these officers is named after. That concocted device. 